Persona 5 Royal is an interesting game to talk about. On one hand, it's one of the best JRPGs to grace the PS4 since it was released in 2017 and still holds up today, so anything it adds in its Royal Edition can only make something outstanding even more so. On the other hand, it's that same game being released with a new game price tag that requires you to put the time into playing a whole campaign with it to see all the new bits it has to offer. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to replay things, the new stuff could be too few and far between for you while still being perfect for a newcomer or someone who needed a reason to do a second playthrough, so it makes it hard to properly recommend it either way. In my time with its first dungeon, Persona 5 Royal was the Persona 5 experience I loved, with sprinkles of new things that made replaying this game feel that little bit fresher as a game I finally have an excuse to replay. And the new bits big and small make revisiting this game I already love feel that little bit more engaging too. So if you're like me and look for a solid reason to replay Persona 5, or you're playing it for the first time and want it in its most content-filled form, Persona 5 Royal's expanded take on a great game will likely be something you'll enjoy, as it's already great, and the additions to an already fun world only help to make it even better for those who aren't looking for something that totally reinvents the original, but rather for something that gives a somewhat older game some new intrigue. I have a feeling most people who are watching this video know Persona 5 well enough to know its premise, but just in case there are some newcomers or you forgot, I'll give a little refresher. The protagonist is a transfer student who is transferred to a high school in Tokyo called Shujin High, where on top of all the usual struggles of moving to a new town, the reason he was transferred was for being accused of assault after being at the wrong place at the wrong time, so he has to be on his best behavior or he'll get quickly expelled. Keeping with this theme, he finds himself in a new series of events. On his way to school on his first day, him and another student called Ryuji find themselves in an alternative castle version of Shujin Hai, where he awakens the power of Persona where he can summon another version of himself, eventually forming a group of Persona users called the Phantom Thieves of Hearts, where your job is to steal hearts from the dungeons of corrupt individuals to remove their twisted desires and help them reform and become better people. And the big exciting journey of making friends with a unique group and taking down evil adults in the city is one that has still held up for me in multiple forms, from reading the first couple of manga recently to the beginning of this world version, and is a great story in this form or the original if you're a fan of story-based JRPGs. Royal's core story is exactly that, but with the addition of a new character in Phantom Thief called Kasumi Yoshizawa to draw you in, who felt comparable to Persona 4 Golden's Marie with how often, or should I say not often, I saw her in my first 10 hours. I can count the instances I saw her on one hand, although I imagine that like with Marie, this number will go up as the story progresses and she becomes more intertwined with the Phantom Thieves business considering she is one, and you get a preview of how she plays in the beginning which at the very least gave me some interaction with her. If you're picking up this version of Persona 5 because you're curious about her though, expect the story to prioritize setting itself up first, as I didn't find her confidant rank in my first hours, but since I'm cool with replaying the story anyway, this was something I didn't mind so much as I was just enjoying re-witnessing an already great story. I will say there were a couple of new story bits not concerning Kasumi here and there though. I was pleasantly surprised as I completed the first dungeon that a few things were added in to spice up the experience that made the dungeon even more impactful, and the rest of my time in the story I spent impressed with how well the original game sets us up for the rest of what's to come anyway. As I said though, this is something you may want to keep in mind if you want more new than old from Royal. And if that's you, I would come into Royal Cautious, as at the very least it's going to take more than 10 hours for new stuff to be in the story more frequently, so it's definitely worth keeping this in mind and what you're looking for from the game from a story perspective if it's something you're considering picking up. While Persona 5 Royal's story in its first 10 hours might be light on Royal Editions, I did find much more from gameplay aspects, particularly as I went through Kamoshida's dungeon, that do make this feel like an upgraded version of the world that lands somewhere between feeling like an expansion and a revised version of the original game. Aside from an altered opening sequence, the first thing I noticed in Royal was a new facial expression for Ryuji, and while this is a small thing to notice, there are lots of little new things like this that come in gradually as you play 
play through it. Little things like new load screens, icons while making phone calls, and additions to the calendar serve as quick reminders that you're playing this world version. And while they're small, I appreciated these things, especially considering a lot of the beginning of the story is pretty close to the original. It was entering the dungeon the second time after those beginning tutorial battles where things started to reveal themselves, and the playthrough started to feel much more interesting. First, the baton touch had some additions where it gets more powerful the more you use it. Later, I got the grappling hook that was almost the most fun I had, as you never knew when the opportunity to use it was going to pop up. But my favorite thing had to be the new will seeds. There are skulls you can find in the dungeon, often with the grappling hook, that you can gain special equipment from if you find all three before completing the dungeon story. And these created a new fun treasure hunt within the dungeon that added another thing to be thinking about as I made my way through it. They're not always easy to find either. I found two the second by chance, but I ended up destroying the dungeon before I could find the lost one, hoping it would be near where the dungeon's main treasure was, but it wasn't. So I like how these were seamlessly added into the world, off the beaten path to encourage you to go that little bit deeper into the world. The final things I found were a new persona and the new challenge battle feature, which looks like a good way to test your party, and will no doubt have me wanting to get the DLC where you can fight the Persona 4 and 3 protagonists this way that I hope will make its way to the west. But in general, this was an interesting way to test out a party and to get some good rewards, and the fact that it gives you a high score to reach for does make me want to come back to it to get the best reward I can. The gameplay additions I think are what is worth getting excited for in Royal compared to Story, as they were much more frequent, and I felt like I was always finding something new, whether it be something big like the Will Seed feature, or something small like activity recommendations. So the Royal version I think does have enough content to remind you you're not playing the original, even if it's outside of the story portion that more people will probably think about when they buy this version. It's worth noting that my thoughts are without having tried the new area Kichi Joji or without having met the new momentous character Jose or the new confidant Takuto, although I did get to try the new phone call feature after doing some of Ryuji's confidant, which got me some bonus points to help me rank up his confidant quicker next time, which reminded me a lot of the nighttime conversations from Persona 4 Golden. In fact, if you've played Persona 4 Golden, that's probably the most similar thing I can compare Royal to. Royal seems to be the original experience added to in a way that makes it feel even better and gives reasons to return to this game if you needed a little push to do so or you want to try it for the first time. And I think if you go in with that mindset and don't expect it to be something completely new, there seems to be a lot to enjoy going forward. I'm excited to see more things like the new areas, so smaller things like scenes that weren't voiced now having new voices in the Royal version. So as someone Someone who hasn't replayed Persona 5 and is dedicated or addicted enough to play the game again, for me, it feels worth it enough since I'm excited to finally return to this world when it comes out next month, and I think people who are into the game or series a similar amount and understand how a game like Persona 4 Golden plays will come in with the right expectations and have a lot of fun with the royal version of Persona 5's world. While I came into Persona 5 Royal more excited to get to know Kasumi and the new story parts, Persona 5 Royal impressed me more with how it makes a great game both in story and gameplay feel even better. There are reasons to dive into its already fun, puzzly dungeons all over again thanks to new things like new personas, grappling, and will seeds, and getting to know confidants during the day should be fun to dive into again too, and made easier by small new additions, along with having new characters to do this with that I'm still looking forward to getting to know when they eventually find their way into the game. As long as you keep in mind that this is the same game with new things added in rather than a completely new one, I think plenty will enjoy this re-release even if it's not entirely necessary to play. But if you loved the original, Royal seems to add even more things to get excited by. And as someone who did, I'm looking forward to seeing more of what Royal has to offer to this world I already love when it comes out in English next month. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below if you've played Persona 5, if you're gonna try Royal, and if you've seen some of the English content about Royal or played the Japanese version, what do you think of it so far? You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. And and until next time, thank you, bye!